mean, the church is just on fire this morning. It's yeah. uh, 64 degrees according to the thermometer over there, but I feel a lot more warm in the Holy Spirit today because the Lord's going to do some serious work here today. Amen? Amen. Beverly, you ready for us today? Yes. Let's have a call to worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's going to be a great day. Amen. I'm, I heard this word somewhere, and I didn't know what it was, so I looked it up, and it's called, it's one word, indwell. And what it means is to be permanent, present in someone's soul or mind, because get possesses great spirituality and I'm going to read it says to read from uh, John 14 20 but I'm going to start at 15 because I like what it said okay find it there you wouldn't know that I'd read it about 100 times if you love me Keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as, as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. I, uh, I thought, that's a strange word, but it means a lot. Since it, I thought maybe it was two, two words, but it's just one word. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you, Beverly. God bless you. Thank you for that wonderful word to open us up this morning. Again, I'm just so excited to be here. And I'm so glad we got some people on this side today. <laughs> I had to come way over here yet last week. We got a, a two-party system. We have bipartisan support. I'll say that. I won't say who's who. But uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Gosh, I've I, I, just been thinking about you guys all week long and thinking about what the Lord is putting on my heart to do. And I, I'm just so excited to be here. So, y'all are ready as I am. Let's begin. Y'all ready for some church? Amen. Let's begin by letting me declare to you that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Heavenly Father, oh, we receive your presence here today, Lord. Lord, you were here when we got here, but Lord, you just came in so much stronger when all these vessels walked in the door, Lord, full of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We're expecting, Lord. We're, we're hungry for you, Lord. We're hungry for more of your presence. We're hungry for your word today, Lord. We're hungry to reach out and touch you through the power and spirit of worship led by Jesus Christ at the right hand of your throne this morning, oh God. Lord, I thank you so much for staying in the United Methodist Church, for leading us here to this place. Lord, I pray over the next hour you would be honored and glorified by everything that is said and done. And Lord, we worship you most of all, Jesus Christ, because you are the one who saved us even when we were dead in our trespasses. You died for us and you rose again and you are coming again. We bless you, we thank you, we praise you. For it's in your name, Lord Jesus, we pray and we say Amen and amen. Tony, let's lead us in the first song today. In the red back book, we're going to do 133. Feel like traveling? 133.
never sang that song before. One and a half there. Okay. <laughs> Jam. Yeah, that's well, we grew up on that one in the in the Baptist church we all sing. Did you sing that? Yeah, we did. I like y'all like it? Yeah, that's right. Y'all yeah, have a seat. Y'all, I don't want to tire you out. Well, oh, they stay excited. Amen. Exactly. Well, maybe you ought to stand up. I don't know. <laughs> Sit down if you can, I guess I should say. Uh, um, what's our, you want to do another song? Well, we do another song. Let's do another song. Uh, 341? 341 in the Red Pack. We're in the Red Pack today. Uh, it's probably it's in the folks there. In the, in the coast area. Three forty one.
real personal with us on the cross, didn't he? He came to save you. He came to save me. He knows us intimately and individually. That's something to be thankful for today. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let's take a little break. Give the singers a break. And let's talk to you folks. And let you give testimonies of God's goodness and God's grace and God's healing. And we need to lift up our prayer requests and petitions to Him that He has given us that privilege as His children to come boldly before His throne. We don't have to shrink back. We don't have to feel like he's too busy to deal with us or maybe our prayer request is just not as important as somebody else's and we would take up too much of God's time. Isn't that crazy that we think that way? Because we think in terms of human involvement and human efforts. God is never too busy for you. God has never uh, got too much on his plate. God is never one who will say that you are not the most important person to him because he loves you. He yeah. loves you individually. He is Lord yeah. to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. Tell me what you're on your mind this morning, church. Joys and concerns, we call it. My friend, I asked you to pray for Kenny. Kenny. He's come to church here before. He's in the hospital. They, um, I'm not sure what it is. They think it's a blockage, but just pray for him. Did he start with chest pains and go to the no, hospital? No, actually, he's, he was sick. He had a cold, and they thought it, he, they thought it was RBS, that stuff that's going around right mm -hmm. now. Army, whatever it is, yeah. And um, anyway, they went. To, he got bad. He got worse than went to the ER. So they were a little shocked, but it turned out that it could be. They think it's his heart. So they're checking him out today, right? Yes. We put it to prayer yesterday when you talked to me. So let's lift up Kenny. He's a great friend of our church. He's been here several times before. One of Craig's very good friends and Ann's too. And uh, I don't know if he'll be watching today. Maybe later he might feel like it. But we just want to send out blessings to him. And we're going to be lifting them up to the Lord for healing today. That's Kenny. Let's remember him in prayer. Who else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Dave Lemke from Iowa. Uh, he comes down uh, every winter and stays with his ex-wife all winter. Mm -hmm. She's had cancer for 13 years. Mm -hmm. But they both came down with COVID last week. Oh, my. So she had to suspend her cancer treatments for the time being. So, But she's doing excellent because her white counts were skyrocketing. And now all of her levels are normal okay. with this wow. new treatment. Well, thank God. That's Dave Lipke and uh, Jan. Dave and Jan. I'll say Dave and Jan. Let's lift them up to the Lord today. Who else? I have friends. We uh we received a check in the mail this week for a donation from Mr. Richard Mance, which I think is glorious and growing. It's $4,000. Oh, wow. wow. God is so faithful, isn't he? I mean, God just provides for this church's needs according to his riches and glory. I'm so amazed by that. That's because, first of all, you're faithful. You guys are faithful. And then God puts it on people outside this church to sow into this church at times. So praise God for that. I pray God the very blessings of one his life. Thank you, Pat. Who else? Jan. No, I don't want to say that. Just pray for Joan. I for don't know if they're going to hang out or not. She's not feeling good. <coughs> the last Sunday, Saturday night in Charleston, she we had to take her to the hospital. She had to stay overnight. Oh, my. And they think she's having an evolving stroke. It's in the middle of her brain. There's a numbing that... Mm. But it, she's fine right now. Trying to find a doctor. She ain't found one. Okay, good. So keep going. Last week she was trying to find a particular doctor to go to mm -hmm. and take the information. We would lift her to the Lord. Joan, if you're watching either now or later, we're going to take authority over that today. I don't believe that the Lord is going to allow that stroke to evolve. I want it to stop today. In Jesus' name, we call it to stop. Stop. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray that in just a few moments, okay? Who else? I got Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all pray for my parents. My dad's still struggling with... When he hurt his back two years ago, it's just not been the same. But he's also now having shoulder issues. And my mom's having some UTI issues. So if y'all could just pray for them and that God will heal them and strengthen them. Our little baby girl fell last night in the bathtub and gashed her whole chin wide open. So Stacia messaged me. Her daddy was out hunting. So um, she was there by herself and she was like, do I take her to the hospital or not? And I said, well, is it spouting blood? And she was like, no. She said, it's finally stopped bleeding. 
And she sent me a picture. It looked rough, but you know, it's a big day. Um, she said it mostly made her mad. <laughs> but she said, just prayed for her that she's going to heal and not have a bad scar and that she's fine this morning. I think she'll be fine. I also have a praise report. I, I, I kind of hinted at this some, and I can't go into a lot of detail, but um, I've mentioned several times that we have someone very close to us that there was some issue with the child and some custody issue and stuff like that. And um, I'm just praising God that God moved on the situation and it came out um, way better than it could have. And so we are praising God for that. And, and I, I, you know, I believe that God can work with the situation as it is. And uh, so, you know, hearts still need to be softened and changed, but um, we're seeing progress there. So we're very, overall, we're very pleased. And then I just wanted to say, when we were singing about what a friend we have in Jesus, I kept thinking about that chorus, I, uh, I am a friend of God. Have it, do any of y'all know that yeah. more modern contemporary song? I'm a friend of God, he calls me friend. And I, I, it just, you know, the, con, the, the concept of Jesus is my friend. You know, when you have a best friend, uh, if you have a best friend that you really consider your confidant, that's the person you want to tell everything to when something happens, whether it's good or bad, that's a person you run to. That's who Jesus is. He wants to be our best friend. He wants to be that person that we run to and that we tell him our good times and we tell them him our bad times and that he supports us through them both he rejoices with us and he supports us and and intercedes for us through the bad times and i you know so often i hear people saying and i've probably been guilty of it myself too uh, well there's nothing left to do but pray <laughs> all yeah. we can do is pray right. well you know what the That's first good. thing that we do yeah. should be to fall down on our knees Number one, thank God with thankfulness and gratefulness for his friendship, yeah. for his sacrifice, for mm -hmm. his love, for his blessings. Come before him with thanksgiving and praise and then bring our burdens to him and lay them at the feet of Jesus. So I just I just was really reminded of that during that old hymn, mm -hmm. what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, when we go through our trials and temptations and our burdens, uh, let's don't be of the mindset, well, all we can do now, we've done everything else. All we can do is pray. Let's pray first. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank I'm you, done Michael. talking now. <laughs> that beautiful. That's perfect. That's, that's first service. That's right. Michael and Ninos, y'all got anything for us today? Ninos, you were give, talk, talking about some of your kids, I think. <laughs> well, I have so much to praise. Um, first, um, my son, Antonino, he came back from Spain. Mm -hmm. Finally, he's going to settle in Virginia with his wife. And um, second is uh, we can enjoy Lucas, and he's more open and still loving more Papa than Grandma. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, this is a great he's getting to enjoy his, being with his, his wife. Our, oh, yeah, our, our son, yes. Antonino, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they, they've been married a year, but they haven't lived together because they're both in the Navy. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, yeah in different uh, different fleets, wow. yeah. on different sides of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, another one is like, like lately, I've been feeling like abandoned. Abandoned. Yeah. So, no, no. Oh, why? It's just, just like a. You know, like you said, like, oh, the doors are getting closed. What happening? And like uh, Angie was saying, I just pray from my heart. And um, yeah, he opened the doors and listened to me and bring me response and solutions to my um, request. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's God. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I also like to uh, thank God for opening our eyes, you know, having our grandson with us and being thankful that, that our kids are grown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the patience for two years old. <laughs> Stacia brought, uh, I call her Tricky, my little granddaughter, little Dexter, she brought her over to the house the other day and she has hit that point where she is wide open constantly. 
I mean, I, I literally have to run. <laughs> it's fun. I love it, but when she's gone, you go to bed. <laughs> yes, yes. It's in a nap time. <laughs> it's okay when they get this age. <laughs> They're more help. Yeah. And then you had to have at the little ones again. Yeah. But with, with Lucas, he's, it's like being my mom again because it's like seeing having Jose a little because he is like a drop of water of him. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just blown by yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's identical to him the way he run the way he, his eyebrow and uh, when he get his attitude is no. <laughs> it's no, it's nothing that can change. Grandkids are such a blessing, aren't they? Oh, I'm true. glad we can all share that joy and that love, so I'll call grave for nothing. Try. <laughs> yeah, well we we we'd be okay with that. I don't I don't know if we're going to, I don't know, Andy said the other day, she said, maybe in the spring, who knows, we might see another grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mom. She still has the TI, so she's still fighting with that, and last night she just had some kind of allergic reaction. She would sleep, oh, bless her heart. all over, and just kind of nuts. Uh, she best. You say she has a UTI. Yeah, she oh. can't get rid of it. So. She don't suffer. Oh yeah, suffer will do that. Yeah, that yeah. UTI. Um, and she's, she's just, just, but they tried to, they see she's had it and they put her on one other kind and it didn't cure. Mm -hmm. So they had to put her on this to try to get rid of the UTI. And she's just having it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I can't yeah. have anything so long because I'll be in the hospital. No, mm -hmm. she's, yeah. she's yeah. been she's yeah. nuts last night. We lift her up. Yeah, Lifting her up today. Anyone else before we pray? I want to talk about our offering too. I'll go ahead and bless the offering when we're praying too. That I already said it about how faithful you guys are. And that, I believe that's why God keeps pouring into us from outside as well as as, as within. Because we take care of, of our needs here that God gives us in the word. Our, our, uh, his blessings for being faithful to God's house. And so he's pouring in blessings from outside from people who, who surround us and who see God working through our church. So that's a blessing to know, and it's a blessing to thank God for today. So I bless our offering and ask you to uh, join me in lifting that up to the Lord today, and we'll, we'll have our offering as soon as we finish our pastoral prayer. But if you would join me in the season of prayer now, silent time of prayer, and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together as we normally do after a pastoral prayer. So join me, if you will, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Lord, you're so, so good. Oh, I believe, just speak that out to him and if you feel comfortable with that. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. You've been so good to us. You've been so faithful. In every season of life, you are faithful. Lord, we do feel abandoned sometimes. Lord, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, and our help comes from you, Lord, and you show up at just the right time to open the right doors, Lord Jesus. We're never alone, never alone. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just lift up the people of God today. Lord, I'm so thankful for all the testimonies, all the praise that we hear today. God, and I'm so thankful that when we come into your house and something good has happened in our lives, we can celebrate it with everyone and something tough or something challenging or something just downright tragic comes along, Lord, we can bring that and we can cry together, we can pray together, and Lord, you are our healer, you're our, our deliverer, you're our provider. Lord, there's nothing that is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord, and we are so thankful that you've given us the privilege of prayer to come before your presence this morning together. Lord, I want to lift up Kenny, our dear brother, who is in Gwinnett Medical this morning, Lord. Uh, God, I pray for skill with the heart doctors, Lord, that they would be able to figure out what's going on with the blockage and how to resolve it, Lord. First of all, I want to thank you that it was found, Lord Jesus, that through this other sickness that he had, Lord, they found this uh, uh, possible blockage in his heart, Lord. And God, I speak healing and health and wholeness over his life, Lord, that the blockage would be completely cleared by whatever uh, methods you desire, Lord. And Jesus, I pray healing upon his life, Lord, right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you healing him, Lord. Lord, for Dave and Jan, Beverly's dear friends who both have COVID, Lord, I pray that you would touch them now in Jesus' name. Lord, and uh, I thank you that 
Jan is doing better with her cancer, Lord, her treatments are working, Lord. I realize she's had to stop through COVID, but Lord, I pray that you would continue to work in her life, Lord. Thank you for Beverly's request today, God. I pray that you would lift these folks up and bring them very close to your heart today. Lord, uh, I want to praise you, Lord, for the, the, the wonderful, generous donation that was made to the church, God. I'm just in, in awe and I'm humbled by people who, who sow into the ministry, Lord, from outside. Lord, I believe that's because the Holy Spirit is working in this church, Lord. I believe that you're speaking to people on the periphery, God, people who may not come to our church or may not even be local, but, Lord, they're sowing. They're sowing, Lord. I want to speak a special blessing over this man who had had it on his heart to donate to our church. Lord, I pray blessings and prosperity and peace over his whole family and everything he touches, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. So thankful that Nino's son is back from Spain, Lord, and he's here and the grandbabies are here lord and just i hear such joy that they're experiencing in their family god i pray that you continue to touch michael and nino's lord and with michael's uh job lord i know he's got a new job he's working and god i pray that you give him great success lord i pray for all their community efforts that they do they work so hard or their service and i bless them now in jesus name lord and i thank you for touching nino's thank you for that wonderful sweet testimony that she gave today about how you met her in her time of feeling abandoned lord jesus and you opened doors and you Touched her heart, Lord. I bless you. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. Lord, for Miss Beth, suffering through this UTI, God, and this reaction to the medication, God, I pray that you would touch her, Lord. I pray that you would just give her peace right now, God, that the medicine would do its work and that she would be clear of that infection. God, I pray you touch Miss Beth, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Bless her and keep her, Lord, in Jesus' name. And the people who care for her, Craig and Ann, and, and the others who, who come over, Lord, to to relieve them. God, I pray in Jesus' name to give them strength for the journey, Lord. We love Miss Beth. We lift her up to you today. Lord, for Joan, Lord, I want to just take some time and think about this, Lord. They tell her she's having an evolving stroke, but Lord, your word says that by your stripes we're healed, Lord. Lord, sickness is subject to you. You are, have authority over sickness, and right now, in Jesus' name, I ask the church congregation to join with me by faith, and we declare that this stroke will not happen. It's done right here today. If there was an evolving stroke, then it is canceled in Jesus' name by the precious blood of Jesus that we shed on the cross of Calvary. Isaiah 53, 5 says, You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, we appropriate that. We claim it today on the authority of God's word that Joan King is healed in Jesus' name. Evolving stroke, be gone, be done, be over in Jesus' name. Any damage that's already been done is healed, restored fully, 100% functional. We bless her now in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we bless her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, for staying the United Methodist Church, I thank you, Lord, for this group of disciples that meets here, Lord, this group of family. Lord, my heart is blessed by each and every person. I'm thankful for that we have a, a, a house full of people today, God, who are seeking you, who love you, who love each other. Oh, God, the body of Christ is such a, such a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Lord, I pray for that we would continue to have vision. Lord, we have Halloween coming up next, uh, next Monday, Lord. It's going to be a big event here in the state of Lord, and we're gathering candy to give out but, Lord, it's more than just giving out candy or celebrating a, a holiday like Halloween, something fun for the kids, Lord. It's about meeting people, Lord. Beverly talked about last week the harvest, about when we meet someone, when we smile at someone, when we shake a hand, when we reach out and give somebody love, maybe someone who's feeling abandoned, maybe someone who's feeling destroyed, maybe someone who's feeling like their life is, is not productive or over. But, Lord, if we can be there, the Holy Spirit working through us, it's a harvest. Lord, what a time of year to think about the harvest, but the harvest of souls is what we're thinking of today, Lord. Place us square in the middle of the harvest and show us that be a person that needs to have that love, that, that joy, that spirit, that hug, that handshake, Lord. Show us that one who is in need, Lord. May you be glorified in our lives as we pursue the harvest that you've given us. Thank you for staying, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing here in our church. Lord, I just ask you to continue and do more, Lord. Do more. Do more. Cause us to see more. Cause us to want more. Cause us to love more. We bless you now, Lord, as we pray as Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Cameron, good to have you here today. Will you be my usher today and go back and get the offering plate for me? If you haven't had the offering plate uh, presented yet, raise your hand and Cameron will stop by you on his way to offer thanks for our offering today. <coughs> so much. There comes some. Anybody else? <coughs> all right. Let's uh, all stand to our feet. Let's thank God for the offering. Praise God for Bless it and use it for your kingdom, good seed sown into good soil for you, for your glory, and we thank you for it. And also, Lord, I'd like to lift up Brenda. I forgot to mention that. God, I pray that you yes. touch Brenda this morning as she's still uh, having some issues in relation to those kidney stones, Lord God, and she has said that she's in a lot of pain. But Lord God, I pray that you would go in, touch her body, give her relief from this pain, Lord Jesus, and heal her. Heal her of all scar tissue and, and disintegrate anything that's been left behind from those kidney stones and give her peace and encouragement in her body, Lord. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Stay with me up, stand it up, and let's do the Apostles' Creed together. <coughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated in God's house today. You know, that was a great catch, Angie. I'm so sorry that I forgot to... We talked about it. We prayed about it. Thank you for remembering Miss Brenda King. Y'all continue to pray for her. Let me just call out these names of people I know are watching us or probably are watching us online today. Miss Roxanna Holiday. She's been watching us. She sent me the nicest email last week and said she's really enjoying the services. So I believe she's here with us today. Chet, I know 100%. Chet, I call him 100% because he's now out there in the, in the truck somewhere across the country listening to us today, worshiping with us. Miss Ginger Vickery. I'm sure she's watching today. She's working two jobs now and trying to get back on her feet. And we want to pray for her. Miss Linda Aaron over at Terrabella, where I work, watching us today. Judy Marcillian, Thomas and Yanni, Bill and Terry, dear friends. Uh, Miss Willie is probably watching us somewhere today with Jane L. and Dane probably watching. So we think about them today and then reach out to them. My mother in law often watches us, Miss Patsy Nation. So I'm thankful for her. And glad that she's probably watching today, too. So anybody else? Anybody else at all? It's a blessing to have the camera, isn't it? It's a blessing to be able to reach out. We'll have 25 or 30 people over the day who will watch our service. It actually doubles our outreach. So thank God for technology and thank God for your faithfulness in internet service and those kind of things. Let's sing a song, guys. In the presence of God Almighty Oh, the boys. 
from Tony B. Isn't it a blessing to have a soul writer? Have you talked to Glenn and Misty? They just got vacation today. I haven't heard from them. I was, I was hoping maybe some of you guys had. Nobody's heard from them. We'll have to check on them. They may be watching today too, so I hope they are. I may be on vacation. I have to say that y'all are so good. Thank you. Thank you. Tony? The Lord is working through you, brother. The anointing is on you. Thank you so much for your your uh, gifts, sharing your gifts with us. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. I guess I better move the camera out here. It's okay to put it right here. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I can't wait to preach. Y'all ready for some preaching? Amen. Let's go to the book of Hebrews today. Chapter 4. We're moving along in Hebrews. Probably a couple of sermons maybe from this chapter, but we're going to start with the first part of Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to look at a question that comes up right often among Christian people, particularly people who are new to the faith, maybe people who don't have deep roots in the faith, and some who do. But there's a perennial question that has gone on all throughout the Christian era, ever since Jesus rose and, and after he died and rose and went back to heaven and the church was instituted, people have wrestled with this question of keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And I believe Hebrews shed some real light on this topic. And the apostle to the Hebrews, whoever that was, was influenced by the Holy Spirit to really settle this question for us once and for all. I call this sermon right from the Old Testament. Remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. We're going to begin reading in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be deemed to have fallen short of it. For we also received the good news just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them since they did not share the faith of those who comprehended it. Now we who have believed enter that rest. As for the others, it is just as God has said. So I swore an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in this manner. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, he says in the passage above, they shall never enter my rest. Since then, it remains for some to enter his rest. And since those who formerly heard the good news did not enter because of their disobedience, God again designated a certain day as today. Today, when, you, when a long time later he spoke through David, as was just stated, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken about later another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. 
Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following the same pattern of disobedience. Going all the way back to the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 2, to the foundations of the world, the author of Genesis says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Dear friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, illuminate this for us, we pray. Lord, give us revelation, knowledge, and utterance. Lord, make it so simple that we can apply it to our lives and settle the questions that we have. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified in everything that's said and done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe it's in your bulletin. I always put the essence of the lesson in a sentence. I want to state that right up front, and I want everything that we say to relate back to that today. Jesus, Jesus is the fulfillment of all the law of Moses, and he is the Sabbath rest for God's people. The key verse we see here in this passage that's long and a bit wordy is verse number nine. If we read that again, the author to the Hebrews says, there remains... After all that's been said, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. You see, he's talking about back in the days of Moses, when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt and across the desert for 40 years, during the days of the Mosaic Covenant, God instituted the Sabbath. It was at this time when he gave his Ten Commandments from Exodus chapter 20, and he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And now, some 1,500 years later, after Jesus has fulfilled the law, Jesus has fulfilled the Levitical priesthood, he has become the high priest of our souls, Jesus is seated in heaven at the right hand of God's throne, and he's making intercession for us. The apostle to the Hebrews says, the Sabbath is fulfilled in him. He is our rest. There remains a rest for the people of God. It's our Sabbath when we look at that term in the scriptures, it's sabbatismos. It means a state of rest, cessation from labor or, em or employment. Does it just mean as in a weekly occurrence as the Sabbath is observed in Judaism, but it's eternal state, yeah. an eternal state for new creatures wow. in Christ. When we enter into God's presence, Jesus is at rest. He is seated at the right hand of God because the work is done. Never more does a sacrifice have to be made. Never more does a priest have to take blood into the Holy of Holies. It's done. Yeah. Done and done. Jesus is resting at the right hand of God and we are resting in Jesus and that's good news today. Let's go a little bit further. Charles Spurgeon, I always have to get a Spurgeon quote in because he's so such a good wordsmith. He said, we ought to pant after sanctification. We ought to be crying and sighing every day after conformity to Christ. But it is neither our sanctification nor our conformity that we find our rest. Our rest comes to us through believing in Jesus Christ. It's actually pretty simple, isn't it? You believe in Jesus Christ. You place yourself in Him through your belief. He takes you to Himself and we find our rest. Matthew chapter 22 Someone approached Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? Out of all those in Exodus chapter 20, the Jews knew every one of them by heart. They had actually taken them and formulated, I believe it was 613 different sub-commands in how that a good Jew was supposed to be and how a good Jew was supposed to act and what they were supposed to do, what they were not supposed to do. Jesus declared, love the Lord your God Amen. with all your heart. With all your soul and with all your mind, this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those two commandments undergird and support all the others. If we can take care of those two, if we can really take those two to heart, have the Holy Spirit work in us, we will rest. Rest, cease from our labors of religion and trying to do and trying to earn and we will rest easy and Jesus will understand his love for us and we will be productive in him. Amen. Amen. March 15th, 2020. Does that date mean anything to you? I had to go back and look it up. March of 2020. That was when we started hearing on the news, society is going on lockdown. Seems like a long time ago now, but it really wasn't that long ago. You remember that feeling you felt? I was listening to the radio 
as I do most of the day, I listen to WSB from Atlanta, talk radio. A fellow named Eric Erickson is on the radio every day. Y'all listen to Eric. I love Eric. And he began to tell people, this is real, folks. And he's, he's, he's pretty, uh, at times he'll tell you the truth if he doesn't think something is real. But I trust Eric. And Eric began to say, this is happening. He said, Governor Kemp is going to shut down the public schools. And they were saying we were going to shut down to, uh, what was it, to flatten the curve allow the hospitals to be able to gear up because this this pandemic is real we've been hearing about for years there could be a pandemic coming here it was this was something that was really getting our attention and states were beginning to implement shutdowns in order to prevent the spread of covid the new york city public school system the largest school system in the united states with 1.1 million students shut down in ohio started to call for restaurants and bars to close and Brian Kemp was calling for the state of Georgia to close down schools. I remember when we heard from our United Methodist Church bosses, no more church. We were out for, what, a couple of months. That's when we bought the camera. That's when we began to worship the Lord virtually. And we had to do that, but we stayed faithful, and the Lord gave us a way to do it. No church until further notice. I got the notice that we're supposed to park the school bus, turn the battery off, and we'll tell you when it's time to come back. We never did come back that whole year. The whole point of this is when work shuts down, it gives you a weird, weird feeling. It gives you, we don't know what to do with ourselves. We're so used to work. We're so used to continuously doing something without some time off. And we go and we make our money. We make our living. And we don't know how to act when it's time to rest. We don't know how to act. Of course, this was a little bit different situation in a pandemic. We were all uh, wondering what was happening. And, and society was changing and morphing. But we're not used to rest. We're not used to being idle. We're very uncomfortable with rest as a society. We feel that everything in our lives has taught us to work, to keep after it, to never let up, to never let up. The truth of the matter is we're not designed to work continuously without some time off. In the long term, it's just not productive to work 24-7. We're called by God to earn our living, to work hard at what is before us, but we're also called to rest. God placed it in his word and he made a commandment with his covenant people to rest because we need time to recoup. We need time to relax our bodies and our minds. We need time with our families. We need time to enjoy ourselves with hobbies. We need a time to worship when we're not worried about work. We're not worried about meeting our bills. We're not worried about the next dollar coming in. We're not worried about problems of this life. We need a time that we can put away everything that is causing us to labor in constant and, 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 and focus our very views and our very eyes on our Heavenly Father in heaven. An English dictionary definition of rest, the old English dictionary, old Oxford dictionary, means to cease from action or motion. Number one, to be free from whatever worries or disturbs you. Number three, to lie down, to be settled or fixed. Number four, to remain confident in, to put one's trust in. Number five, to lean on. When we look at the Greek definition as it's presented here in Hebrews, the word for rest is kataposis. It's the kataposis of God. Kataposis of God. It says, enter the rest. Enter the rest of God. It means the heavenly blessedness in which God dwells in which he has promised to make persevering believers in Christ to be partakers after the toils and trials of life on earth are ended. And he says right here in verse 9, chapter 4, there remains a Sabbath rest. God has a rest for you. God has a rest for me where we no longer have to toil. We no longer have to worry. We no longer have to think about will we be okay when, when Jesus comes back or when we die. We no longer have to think about earning our way. We have rest. We have rest. Number one, I believe I put the outline in your bulletin. First point, God has promised a Sabbath rest for his people. You see, the Sabbath as a religious observance was instituted by God in the time of Moses. We don't find it before that. God called the seventh day holy back in the book of Genesis, but he never told his people to observe it until the day of Moses. And there was very specific reasons for that. You see, the Sabbath was a socio-economic principle as well as it was a religious gathering. It was a people having compassion for those who labored. The Jewish community was, was probably over a million people. We're not sure exactly how many people were nomadically living out in the desert heading toward the promised land, but we know that it was a lot of people. It was a mass 
mass of people and there were amazing logistics that went into managing that community. And there were different classes of workers. There were people that had been won as spoils of war. There were people who labored and did, did manual labor. There were managers, much like we would see in our society today. And this was a way that God said everyone needs a rest, a physical rest, a rest from labor. It was actually a productive thing. It was actually a way to increase productivity if you give somebody a rest. Give them a day off. That was unheard of for people around them. People thought that the Jews were lazy because they took this day off. These people from other tribes and from other countries. The Sabbath was a socioeconomic principle. I read this in the Jewish Virtual Library and I thought it was very descriptive. A, 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 a collection of modern day articles on Judaism. In modern America, we take the five day work week so much for granted that we forget why a radical concept of a day of rest was in ancient times. The weekly day of rest has no parallel in any other ancient civilization. In ancient times, leisure was for the wealthy and the ruling classes only, never for the serving or the laboring classes. In addition, the very idea of rest each week was unimaginable. The Greeks thought the Jews were lazy because we insisted on having a holiday every seventh day. You see, the, the Jews honored everyone that worked for them because God said, take a day of rest. The Sabbath, each week, celebrate the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a call to worship for the Jewish community where Jews were given an opportunity to devote their thoughts and their actions toward Yahweh completely for one day a week. They would take themselves apart. They would pull their families apart, eliminating all the other competition for their minds and for their hearts, focusing completely on Yahweh. The Sabbath was a sign of the covenant between Israel and God, the Mosaic covenant, we call it. Exodus 31, 7 says this, It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and he was refreshed. So why do we need rest? Because we can't keep on indefinitely without rest. We're not designed as people to work without rest. Rest is actually an enhancement to our productivity. We who believe have entered into the rest of Jesus. What is belief? It's simply trusting God. What Spurgeon said, it's simply trusting God. It's simply trusting in Him, in him as our Savior. It is trusting the Father and believing in His infinite love for us. It's a simple truth, yet it's one we need to remember and to be completely assured of. Number two, the Sabbath is a spiritual rest. The Sabbath is a spiritual rest. The spiritual side of us is connected to the physical side. We can't separate one from the other. Each one affects and influences the other. We cease from our mental labor and our, our striving mentally, and it causes us to rejuvenate. We cease from our religious exercises and trying to appease and please God, and it rejuvenates us. We cease from the idolatry that we see around us. People who worship money, who, who worship uh, carnal desire. There's all kind of worship going on in this world. We pull back from that and we rest in Jesus. You see, we need a connection with God and we need a connection with God's people. It's vital because we're born to worship. Every one of us worships someone. Every one of us worships something, no matter who we are. It may be God, it may be the devil, but we will worship somebody. It may be our own ego or it may, it may be our comfort or our desires. It may be money and possessions or status, but everyone is a worshiper. What we put first in our lives, that which we spend our days pursuing to the exclusion of other things, that's what we worship. That's what we worship. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's often been said that you want to see what someone worships, you just look at their checkbook or their bank account. You can tell in real short order what is important to a person. You see, the Sabbath was a call to worship. It was to put first what comes first. Come apart and rest from your labor, physically and spiritually. Take the day and trust God and provide that He provides for us. And we can spend time with our Father. We can spend time with our family. We can spend time in prayer. They will go to their temple, meet and fellowship with brothers and sisters. Allow the goodness of God to wash over your soul. Sabbath was a weekly time of spiritual renewal that kept God's love and passion for Yahweh burning. Mark chapter 2, it's interesting. Jesus was 
one day going through the grain fields with some of his disciples. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain to eat. They were hungry. Back in those days, if you saw a field, there was a portion of the field where you could go glean. You could have something to eat. They didn't have McDonald's on the corner. They couldn't go to Taco Bell and grab something to eat. They couldn't go get a sandwich. They could just go get some grain out of the grain field. And his disciples were on the Sabbath. They were hungry and they went and get some, got some grain to eat. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered, have you never read the date what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of, of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he gave some also to his companions. Then he said to them, listen to this, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Jesus is the Sabbath. He was the fulfillment of the Sabbath. It was fulfilled in their very presence. Number three, we enter God's Sabbath rest by faith. Yeah. Though the day passed with the old covenant, there is still a rest for the people of God. I've already said it a couple of times. I want to reemphasize it once again. Hebrews 4 and 9, there remains a rest for the people of God. We enter because we believe. We enter because we believe what he has promised. He will do what he said he would do, that he loves us, that he died for us, and that he invites us to enter into his rest. The Hebrew author warns us once again, don't let your heart be hardened. He talks a lot about the hardness of heart that the children of Israel felt toward God and how it separated them from God, that they would not enter the rest that he provided. Don't let your heart be hardened. We don't enter by our own works. We don't enter by our own worth. Nothing that we could do or have done could ever qualify us to enter into rest. We are qualified because he loves us and because we believe his promise. Amen. Amen. Jesus has become our high priest and the Holy Spirit is with us at all times. Every day we celebrate his presence and we place him first in our priorities everywhere we go, wherever we go. Hebrews 4 God again designated a certain day as today. When a long time later he spoke through David, just as was stated, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. We talked about that last week, this concept of today. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not six months ago or six years ago, not uh, whenever something happens in the future that will trigger this. Today, yeah. today is the day to believe. Today is the day to enter into his rest because Jesus is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. It's spiritual and it influences our actions. The physical realm influences our actions. Is Sunday the Christian Sabbath? I ask myself that question. I've heard that over the years. I've heard different people say that. There are a fair number of Christian sects and denominations that actually celebrate the Sabbath. One that comes to mind is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Have you ever known anybody who is a Seventh-day Adventist? I've known several. Some of them are very good friends. People who love the Lord, love Jesus with all their heart, people who I could fellowship with, but they will not budge. Sabbath is Saturday, and they go to church on Saturday. Sunday's just a regular work day to them, and they'll just go and, you know, whatever. But they, they believe this with all their hearts, and there are different ones. I'm not sure there are various whole list of them that I saw different Christian denominations that still celebrate the Sabbath as a as the, as the, the, the last day of the week rather than the first day of the week and when we look to the scriptures for some guidance I look and I said to my, you know as I've prayed over the years it's in the Ten Commandments he said remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and don't do any work on this day it was a, a one of the Ten Commandments we know God's commandments have not passed away but they have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Yes. They have been fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is our Sabbath. We still honor the Sabbath because we rest in Him. We rest in Him. And some preachers and different theologians would actually say that we celebrate the Sabbath today, that we have the Christian Sabbath on Sunday. And as I think about that, I thought about that and I prayed about it, and I don't I don't think that's right. I don't I say no. It's no. not a Sabbath. No. The Sabbath as a religious observance <clears throat> has passed away. It passed away. Jesus is now our Sabbath. Amen. We celebrate Jesus every single day of our lives. We walk in Him. We live in Him. We move in Him. We have our being in Him. We wake up in the morning and we give our lives to Him because He lives and because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Yeah. 
Yeah. Folks, it's a wonderful privilege that we walk in that they did not have in the Old Testament. We live under a different covenant. They lived under the Mosaic covenant where works were necessary to bring one closer to Christ and, and closer to God and closer to his touch. But now, dear friends, we live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are vessels of the Holy Spirit. He lives in us. He lives in us. The Sabbath is every day for us. As Christians who live under a new covenant, we worship Jesus every single day. We are commanded to give our lives as a living sacrifice to God every day. Your life is a flow of worship, of praise and thanksgiving. We don't do it because of the law. We do it from a deep spiritual passion in our souls. I want to ask you these questions. They're in your bulletin. And they came up in my spirit as I studied this, as I began to close. Look at those questions with me. And I want you to think about these over the week. Do you desire to worship? You're here today, aren't you? I know that you're here. I'm preaching to the choir today. People who come to church usually desire to worship. Do you desire to gather with God's people? Once again, there is no thing greater in my spirit than when God's people get together. When you're not here, I miss you. When I'm not here, I hope you miss me. I wasn't here a couple of weeks ago. We belong together. God has placed us together for a reason, for his holy purpose. Do we desire to gather with God's people? Is resting in Jesus a priority in your life? Do you make it a priority? I hope we'll start thinking about this. After I've studied this, I want to be more deliberate. I want to be more uh, directed toward resting, towards resting, taking that rest that Jesus gives us in the Sabbath. Now we say, well, why do we come to church on Sunday? Because the early Christians did. Because that was a pattern that was developed. As soon as Jesus rose from the dead and the church was born, they began to worship on Sunday. They call it the Lord's Day. The first day of the week, not because it was a Christian Sabbath, but because it was the day of resurrection. The New Testament, the New Covenant, the one we live under now, nowhere affirms any keeping of a certain day as the Sabbath. The Lord's Day is when we worship. The Lord's Day is when we come together. Galatians chapter 5 says this, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up in slavery to the law. You see, the law creates slaves. But Jesus in his grace creates rest. Jesus leads us into rest. We must understand that even though we are free from the law, he still calls us to assemble together. To assemble together. That's why we're here today. Amen? Amen. That's why he brings us together. Hebrews 10, 25. We're going to hit this in detail when we get out there to chapter 10. Uh, the apostle of the Hebrews says, Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. I thought back to when I was a kid. You remember things were different back in the 60s and the 70s. People didn't work on Sunday so much. If you didn't have to work, you didn't work. A lot of places were closed. We Now we look at Chick-fil-A and they're the odd person out that they stay closed on Sunday and they do that for Christian principles and I believe it benefits their business because they honor God. They honor their families of the people that work for them and it, it's, it's actually a socioeconomic principle. I believe that they honor God on Sunday. I remember when I was a, a small child, J.C. Penney would not open on Sunday. As long as Mr. Penney was alive, that was a rule that he had. My stores will not open on Sunday. As soon as he passed away, they began to open on Sunday. And it's interesting when we look around us and uh, we see how God has worked. And we also see how society has evolved. During the pandemic, a lot of places started to close down on Sunday. And by, by necessity, and there's still some places that are closed down on Sunday that formerly were thriving on Sunday. But I believe that God uses places like Chick-fil-A who will honor God, who will uh, give that day, that day of rest to their employees and give that day of worship to people that they're able to go with their families and go to church and, and meet with God at church. Do you remember, um, let's see, where was I at? <laughs> I'm kind of going a little bit long today, I'm sorry. Believers are concerned. We're going to end this right here. How about that? <laughs> Go to your bulletin. I want to look at those last few points. I want to look at those last few points. I had too much. I had more than I could say in the time to say it. If I start down another path, we'll be here for a few, two more minutes. But I want to look at these conclusion points. God promises his people a Sabbath rest. I've said that probably about 10 times. I want to say it one last time because that's what I want you to take away. The Sabbath is fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus Amen. is our Sabbath. We enter God's promised rest by faith, not performance. We're not doing a performance for God. We enter by faith. 
There's those questions I want you to ponder this week. Do you desire to worship? Do you desire to gather with God's people? Is resting in Jesus a priority in your life? And Lord, I thank you so much, God, for this today. I thank you so much for this sermon. Lord, the Sabbath rest. Lord, let us rest in you. Let us rest in Jesus. Thank you that there remains a Sabbath rest. Lord, I pray that we would understand this relationship that you desire to have with us, that you desire to, to walk with us in, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for your rest that you bring to your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. What page is that, Tony? 375. 375 in the red back. Have thine own way, Lord. Sabbath rest. Amen. I got this one on my heart. I always love it when we sing a cappella together. Y'all sing this with me. There we go. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am the Sabbath rest for the people of God over the state of the United Methodist Church. We, re we dismiss each other in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. Glory to God. Celebrate and love each other. Love each other. Love each other. Yeah. 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 Internet audience, we're going to reprise the special song.
Thanks for joining in with us. We appreciate it and hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.